Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, the webinar provided by uh, HF Proxy and uh, Log.io. My name is Asaf, and I'm uh, the co-founder and uh, vice president of product at Log.io. Um, you have uh, my email address here, so if, that's not the same uh, if there's going to be any follow-up or anything, and obviously my uh, Twitter account, and I'm going to let uh, Dr. Uh, introduce himself. So yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I am uh, Baptiste Tasman. I'm a technical product manager at HProxy Technologies. I'm also uh, deeply involved uh, with the community uh, behind HProxy, so I'm a maintainer of part, part of the code of HProxy, and I also uh, talk a lot on the mailing list and I uh, participate a lot to events related to HProxy. <clears throat> Thank you, Bertie. Uh, so uh, what are we going to cover today in the webinar are a few things. First of all, we're going to do a very quick introduction into uh, Logs.io and the DLK stack. Um, then uh, introduction into HAProxy and an explanation of how to shift logs from HAProxy to the DLK stack. Um, but then we're going to review uh, two use cases. Obviously, there are a lot of use cases, different ones for troubleshooting and analyzing logs using the health stack, using uh, Azure Proxy Loan, um, and uh, we're going to cover two of them, and if we spend the time for more, we maybe cover uh, something else. Uh, so what is Logs.io? So Logs.io is an open source analytics company. Uh, we take, we mainly take uh, the open source stack of uh, ELK, which is Elasticsearch, Logs.io, Kibana, uh, and we run it as a cloud service. Uh, we also have big data insights and analytics on top of it, which I'm going to cover uh, uh, during, the, during the webinar. <clears throat> Why ELK? Uh, as, as most of you know, uh, ELK today is de facto the log analytics uh, in the market today. So with estimates of 400,000 different companies that are currently using uh, the ELK stack in different variations, uh, from small companies to large companies like Netflix, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and even uh, Microsoft Azure. So the, in the past few years, the market has shifted from using proprietary products like Slack and Simulogic and others uh, to leverage more of the open source products like the, uh, the Alpha. The biggest advantages of the Elk stack is that it's, uh, it's simple and it's beautiful. You can set it up uh, relatively easy. And, uh, and um, it is open source, meaning it doesn't cost any money. The challenges of using the, the Elk stack is that it's not production ready. So if you do want to run it, and if you do want to run it in production, you have to do a lot of work <coughs> making sure excuse me, that, uh, that it's stable, that uh, all the versions have been upgraded and stuff like that. It's also very difficult to scale. So once you set it up, it's okay, but once you get above a certain size of database is uh, relatively difficult to scale on all levels, including log slash Kibana uh, and Elasticsearch. It also comes with very poor security. So right there out of the box, the stack is, is completely open and, uh, and uh, it doesn't come with enhanced security. <clears throat> Why Logs.io? So Logs.io uh, is providing the Elk stack as a SaaS service. Uh, it's up and running in minutes, so you don't need to do any of the configuration. You do get the familiar view of Kibana, so you don't need to get used to a different uh, presentation and a different uh, uh, visualization there. It is infinitely scalable, so it does not matter if you spend 100 gigs a day, if you spend one terabyte a day, it really doesn't matter. The, the, the platform and the service is completely scalable. It has advanced security, uh, and what we know is uh, making sure that it's show up uh, to uh, focus on. And uh, it has enhanced security, so, uh, um, and uh, the ability to uh, secure the data, and uh, it is production ready, so we have taken care of, uh, of all the stuff that's needed for uh, to make sure that uh, it is production ready, everything has to do with upgrades and uh, migration and all the hosting uh, requirements are being taken care of.
Uh, Logly also provide an enterprise grade elk, which means that we provided additional stuff on top of what is offered with the open source version. Some of it include advanced analytics. Uh, we have the ERK apps, which I'm going to show you during the demo. And, uh, and uh, we have reporting uh, for schedule report, advanced alerting uh, that are completely integrated into Kibana, uh, and also other features like or log archiving and role-based access uh, um, in here. The advanced analytics that we do is uh, leveraging unique technology that uh, can uh, can analyze the, the behavior and the habits of, of uh, hundreds of thousands of different IT professionals all over the world to be able to detect what is important and what is critical for you to uh, to analyze and to look at. And, uh, and uh, this is kind of like our advanced analytic and the way that it works in the system. I'm going to hand it over now to Baptiste to uh, to be able to review the HA proxy. Okay, so yeah, uh, why the HA proxy? Um, can you switch to the next slide, please? Oh, I think I can click here. Okay, fine. So yeah, HA proxy is a load balancer. Uh, so basically, it's a piece of component uh, which stands between uh, users and applications. Um, it's uh, in the open source community the reference load balancer. I mean, uh, by that, that it's being uh, uh, supplied with most of the other uh, third-party open source projects like OpenStack, CloudStack, and, uh, and some other ones. It's a full-featured uh, TCP HTTP reverse proxy, uh, widely used and deployed. Uh, many, many websites and applications uh, use HA proxy today. Um, it is very famous for its uh, high performance uh, HTTP and TLS processing. It is very simple to use. Um, we'll see later a bit of uh, configuration. It's a simple keyword uh, configuration, old school, but uh, very efficient. And the software by itself uh, allows to make a very complicated uh, configuration and uh, processing of your uh, of your uh, app streams. But it's not the purpose of this uh, of this webinar. And it's a very verbose piece of software. We are going to see that uh, later. HA proxy will log a lot of things, a lot of information. And this is due because, uh, as I said in introduction, it is placed in a very uh, sensitive part of your application, which is between your clients and uh, your uh, application server. Uh, can you switch to the next slide, please? OK. So who we are, uh, HA proxy technologies. So we are the company which is behind uh, this famous software, HA Proxy. Uh, we do business only with HA Proxy. Uh, we do propose uh, enterprise um, packages. We do propose uh, support and everything. Um, we develop and maintain the community version. So and all of our business, anyway, is based on the community version. We have only one uh, source code of HA Proxy, which is the community. Um, and uh, in our enterprise products, uh, customers can um, embed their own modules or can allow, uh, can also load our own modules to, inf to enforce their uh, web uh, security and also to use HA proxy at scale. Uh, so uh, can you go to the next slide? OK. Uh, so I think uh, we'll take the handover. Um, the presentation now, and I'm going to show you how uh, our HA proxy is configured. So we have set up a small uh, lab, let's say, uh, where we have an HA proxy running. Uh, HA proxy is load balancing a couple of uh, web servers which are standing uh, behind it. And we have a small bot over internet which is going to send um, logs or to send requests uh, to, um, to our HA proxy instance. Our HA proxy instance, is going to generate the logs based on the incoming traffic and forward the logs inside a uh, local syslog server. From this syslog server, then logs.io has configured everything to ship the logs uh, within uh, ELK stack, uh, which is hosted by themselves. So just uh, on the, I'm currently running a shell on the server, and I have set up uh, HA proxy, and here is our uh, configuration. So basically, um, when you want to send log uh, to a simple syslog server, this is handled by this uh, simple line, oops, uh, this one, 
Ah, sorry. Okay, this one. So you say you give an IP address uh, per a line if you want to have more than 1,000 uh, bytes per uh, log line, and a log facility. That way, your syslog server can um, can sort the logs. And then we have a few other uh, settings. Uh, this one tells uh, that your frontend is going to use the the log definition from the global section. This one says HAProxy that you want to use the uh, HTTP log format. That's because we are currently doing uh, HTTP uh, processing in our application. That said, we have uh, overwritten uh, the default um, HTTP log format. So this log format is a specific one, uh, which is compatible with the default log format. But we have added more information uh, just for the purpose of the of the webinar. So we are capturing some uh, information from the SSL uh, traffic, so SSL uh, SNI information sent by your client, SSL uh, protocol in use, the cipher in use, and everything. It will be useless in the in the in the frame of this webinar, but it was just uh, worth mentioning it that we can uh, log almost everything we want, and also we capture some request headers and everything. And uh, last but not least. Um, we prevent also HA proxy, so that's here, from logging uh, false connections. So you know now you have the famous pre-connect feature from the browser, and the browser will open connection without using them. The problem is that HA proxy will generate a lot of log lines, and usually people just want to disable this log line because uh, they don't want to have to justify to their manager that uh, most of their traffic or some of their traffic, a percentage of their traffic, is only pre-connect, which leads to no connections, and where HA proxy will return either a 400 or a 408 errors uh, for these uh, connections. Uh, I capture some host headers, some user agents that could be useful later for uh, for the analytics here. And on my lab, I deny all the traffic, uh, which is not related to our to our demo. So now, if I have a quick look uh, at a log line, I just did a CP sooner to avoid. Okay, so this is a log line. Let's say let's take the latest one. Oh, let's make it like this. Oops, sorry. So on this log line, uh, we can see a lot of information. So we know what was the front end, the back end, and the server in use for, for HA proxy. We have a lot of timers related to the processing of the server and the processing of the URL, how much it took to process it, how long it took for HA proxy to get connected from a TCP point of view to the server. Um, well, a lot of information. We can see our TLS information here, and we can see the full uh, URL. So this log line is generated by HA proxy. And we can um, analyze it uh, using a small tool that uh, some people may know already, whose name is HLog. So HLog will take your flat file, uh, whatever how many lines uh, you have inside, and it's going to report you some statistics about um, errors, uh, URL response time, server response time. So I just set up a couple of uh, examples. So this command is going to tell us in the log file we have. Uh, what is the slowest uh, URL? So we can see uh, below the um, below the um, column uh, T AVG, like time average, how long it took as, as an average for each of these uh, URLs which are listed uh, on the right. Um, the problem of this is that since it is based on a, lo on a log file, you have to uh, extract from your gig of logs only the logs of the period you want to analyze and then have a look at it. So it could be quite uh, quite Time consuming. Uh, we have also SRV, so another uh, log line that we can use, and this one is going to sort the server uh, by average response time, which is the latest column here, oops, right above. And we can see that in our farm, uh, we have a couple of servers which seems to be much uh, slower than all the other ones. Um, once again, the problem is that when you want to analyze this, uh, you must uh, you must do it. Uh, you must first extract the logs line you want to analyze, and then you have to run your logs line uh, from the CLI. And uh, this is where I give the hand back to uh, Ashaf, which is going to show you exactly the same result uh, within Kibana. Uh, but uh, when you can zoom in, you can play with uh, with the graph and, uh, and all that stuff. So Ashaf, please. <coughs> Thank you, Baptiste. 
take over control. So uh, uh, I'm going to show you exactly how the logs are being analyzed with uh, with logs.io. But uh, before I do that, I want to kind of refer to you, and this is a kind of like part of the presentation. Is uh, Baptiste and us uh, wrote a blog post about how to monitor HProxy with ELK, um, and it includes all the configuration that Baptiste was talking about, all the configuration that exists here. It also includes uh, all the grok and the parsing of the files that is needed. So if you do want to go and you do want to have uh, installed your own Elk stack instead of using logs.io, then uh, you can do it and you have all the information in here, including dashboards and use cases and troubleshooting and, and uh, how, to do, uh, how to do audits for that. Um, going back to uh, Logs.io, so this is Logs.io, and you can see if you're familiar with the uh, EIK stack, it looks uh, very familiar. This is the familiar Kibana view. Uh, we have a few uh, log shop shipping mechanisms um, that are quite a lot. We support a lot of things, and one of them is the HA proxy. Again, we have here the same configuration that uh, Baptiste was referring to, uh, and you have a specific configuration on how to ship the data into Logs.io. What we do in Logs.io is we take the data and we automatically filter, we automatically parse all the data uh, in the messages. So um, if I look at one message, and uh, hold on for a second, set it up. Um, so if I open up one message, uh, this is how a log line looks like. And uh, this is exactly what which is for showing in the different files. And you see that Logs.io takes that message and breaks it out to fields that can be manipulated, that you can query on them, that you can uh, uh, filter by them, that you can create visualizations on them, and so forth. So for example, if I'm here and I want to see only the logs that are coming from uh, server one, which is S1, I can click on the plus uh, sign here, and then Kibana will automatically filter, and now you see that the filter was added here, server name S1, and I only see the logs that are uh, that are relevant for uh, for S1 for that server. If I want to look for a problem, I can uh, I can again look for the problem and uh, see what's going on in the log. This view is highly customizable, so if I want to add here uh, the request URI, I can add it here, and if I want to add here the response. Uh, the, the status code or the server name that I can edit here, and I can remove the message if I want, and I can design that view uh, as I want it. I also can control the time. So uh, you can run uh, stuff in ELK for 30, 60, 90 days in the past, and all the logs are being retained here, and you can go back in time, and you can look at the uh, at, uh, previous issue, and you can see uh, uh, things that were going on. So uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, kind of like configuring log shipping and we're going to share it, but there is also, this is the blog post that I was referring to. So if you do want additional information, if this pass was too fast for you and you want to go back and figure out how to do it, then uh, we have all the instructions and all the information. Uh, what, we wanna, what I want to show right now is, uh, is a couple of use cases that, uh, that are pretty common based on feedback that uh, we got from Baptiste and the folks at HAProxy and show how to do troubleshooting and how to do analysis uh, using the ELK stack. So the first one is, uh, is troubleshooting performance issue. Uh, like Baptiste mentioned, uh, you can use the HA log and, and figure out what URL is running slow and what, your, what servers are running slow. Uh, but it is taking a lot of time if you actually want to figure out what URL on a server is running slow and uh, and to get that effect. So uh, in order to do this, we built a dashboard that uh, does exactly that. And I'm going to run through how that dashboard is built. So the top level visualization is uh, showing the response time per servers and the URI split. So you see that the bottom, this is uh, S3, so this is server 3, this is server 6. This is server nine, uh, and each one of the lines and the dots here in the different colors represent a different URL that is coming. So right at the gate, you, first of all, you see that S3 server three is, has an, a, a different or anomalous behavior to it, and, uh, and response time of each one of them is taking a, a long time to happen. The other thing you can see is that, uh, that uh, the lines are presented in yellow and green here 
represent uh, a URL that in all the servers is running slower than the other queries. Um, this dashboard, and I will show you in a minute how, how we built it, but I can, if I click on the, on the graph here, what, what uh, the Kibana does and what the ELK does, it asks me if I want to add filter. So I don't want to filter the time, and I don't want to filter the URL, or I do want to filter, I don't want to filter the URL, I only want to filter things that are on server three, and if I click apply now, then the entire dashboard is moved to only show me server three. And now I see that this line, which is the search engine result uh, .ph, is taking a lot, uh, a long time, and the purple line, which is search engine uh, slash uh, search .ph, is taking a long time. So things that have to do with the search engines are running slower than other uh, than other queries. If I want to look at the queries in general. What I can do is I can go back to the same view, and now I can click on this. And now instead of filtering by the server, I only want to filter by the request URI. Uh, and, uh, and if I apply that now, I can see how that one is behaving or how access to this is behaving across all my servers. So this is a task that if you, don't, if you want to sift through all the HA proxy logs and try to troubleshoot what is uh, how are things running and how fast are things running on each one of the servers would take you quite a lot of time and uh, uh, and expertise to be able to do that. So so this is uh, this is uh, that view. Uh, some of the views here, like this is the response time per server, so I can see that the response time for search engine slash result dot the PHP is running slower on server three than is running than is running on all the other servers. So even though it is running slower on the other servers, on server three it's running exceptionally slow. Um, um, and like and let me show you kind of like how we built uh, one of the visualizations here. And uh, so if you click on the pencil here, then you would see that we built this visualization by setting the x axis on to be the timestamp. And I can open up and show you. So this is taking the time uh, then we split the line by the servers. So each line here represents a different server. And on the y-axis, we set up the average and uh, uh, average of the time server response, which is a field that either logs.io or you can do it yourself can be automatically extracted from the logs and that can be graphed. Uh, this is a lot to cover from uh, from a lot of graphing and how to set it up, but. For that, we have the, the ELK apps, and uh, if you want apps that have to do with HAProxy, then uh, you can search for HAProxy, uh, and we have different visualization and dashboards here, including everything that, uh, that we're talking about today in the webinar, and you can simply open up or install any of them once you send the logs for, uh, uh, for HAProxy, and Logs.io is automatically creating these graphs and automatically being able to understand it and, uh, and run this for you. So uh, we covered the use case of, uh, of uh, server performance and how do I analyze performance using this. As you can see, this can be an ongoing basis. You can run a dashboard by it, and you don't have to look at the logs, and you don't have to wait for, uh, uh, for customers uh, uh, or partners to, to complain. Uh, the next uh, um, use case that we want to cover, and we also built a different dashboard for it, is the use case of detecting errors. So uh, if I'm looking at the response uh, uh, dashboard, I can see, sorry, this is, if I'm looking at the HTTP status uh, dashboard that we've created, you can see that, uh, again, we've created a view. The first view is doing all the HTTP status code uh, based on the server. So I have server five here and server one here and server two here. Uh, and you can see that most of them are acting normally other than server three and server seven which you see a bunch of five or four errors. So this is something that needs to be taken care of and needs to be understood why it's happening on these specific servers. The other thing which we've done is uh, we've created a graph, which, uh, like a pie chart, that's showing all the termination states that we get from HAProxy. And uh, you can see that there are some termination states, which uh, four dashes, which means it's OK. And uh, uh, lower S, uh, capital H, means that there is an issue with, uh, with the termination code. Now let's say I want to analyze where the 504 are resulting from. The same thing I did before, I can click on it and then I can decide what I want to filter. And in this case, I care about everything that has to do with status code uh, 504. 
I apply the filter and uh, I immediately see, first of all, the two servers that are affected by it, so it's server 7 uh, and server 3. I can see that all the response codes are correlated with the termination state here. So I can see that, that whenever I get the termination state uh, lower as capital H, that means that I'm going to get a 504, uh, which is an issue that I need to take care of. I can see all the URLs that uh, that got that uh, uh, that got that status code. So I can see that catalog.zoom slash zoom.php and so forth got that status code and I can immediately with a click of a button uh, be able to analyze everything that uh, that is going on here. So this is another example and let me again uh, show you one of the one of the visualization we've built uh, and I want to choose this this visualization for example so this is a pie visualization, uh, and what we did here is that on the inner circle, we uh, uh, put the termination status code, and you can see that the green one represents the, uh, the, all the minuses, like four dashes, and the blue one represents the uh, lower S, capital H. On the outer circle, we split it by the server names, so you do see that most of the servers, most of their colors are getting um, only the green status, which is fine, and only server seven here is uh, is getting both uh, uh, both colors in here. So this is another interesting way of looking at the graph. And now I can, if I can see that, I can quickly drill down and say, okay, this is the error that I'm looking for. This is the server, sorry, it's server uh, seven and server three. You see here the green and the the blue, these are two servers that are affected by uh, uh, by this issue, and I can immediately troubleshoot it and uh, and be able to analyze the problem. So this is like a, this is very uh, this is a very quick way of getting a very very nice insight into uh, what HA proxy is is doing in all the time. I can tell you from our experience. So we at Logs.io we run uh, uh, quite a few HA proxy servers, and uh, to all of our traffic go through HA proxy. And we use this uh, uh, all the time, so we use dashboard for that uh, uh, um, visualization. Uh, there are other dashboards that are also created and part of the ELK app, so I can open it up and show you. Uh, we have an HR proxy overview, which include a bunch of uh, different uh, visualizations and uh, information that uh, that we use internally, and uh, we'd be happy. Or like I said, I mean. All of them are contributed as part of the ELK app, all the visualization, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, to help with anyone with any question that has to do with uh, specific HA proxy. But that's not uh, the end of it. So uh, we, we talked about how to analyze performance issues and how to analyze errors and stuff like that. Now the question is, like, I want to be proactive, so I want to be able to uh, uh, to get alerted when something like that happens. So if I am uh, looking for, uh, and look, let's look for status code that uh, uh, that we talked about. So I can open up uh, one of the messages, for example, and uh, and I can see that this one has a status code of 200, which is not interesting for me, so I can filter it out. So <clears throat> now I see everything that is not 200. So uh, 200, and uh, so this is uh, this is not a uh, message that I got to 200, and I can see the different uh, messages here, and I can also say I want to get whenever I get status status code uh, 504, and uh, and now I see only messages that I got uh, uh, status code 504. I can see this in the past 15 minutes. I got about a thousand messages of this, which is usually not a good thing for me. And I can create an alert and saying that you see that the query was copied here, the status code 504, and I can get uh, status 504, and I want to run it every hour, and and I want to get alerted if uh, the results are greater than or equal to 10. So if I get more than 10 504s in an hour, I want to get alerted. I can send it as an email to myself, uh, or I can configure any webhook. So uh, we do support uh, Slack and PagerDuty and all the different web webhooks. If you're using HipChat or Snap, or then uh, you can uh, you can get all the information in here and uh, be able to get alerted on it. 
So instead of being reactive and watching the dashboards all the time, we give you the ability to be proactive and define alerts and be able to uh, get notified whenever a condition that uh, you're interested in is, uh, is occurring. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Baptista to see if there is anything that he kind of like wants to add about different errors that can be, uh, can be detecting uh, using the log files and other use cases that uh, that uh, might be interesting? Well, the most common use case is, you know, the slowness part. So there is no errors, but something is getting slow on the application. And uh, that's why I wanted to highlight uh, this part on the, on the webinar. That's because it's the most common use case, and we have some customers calling us all the time saying, oh, I have some uh, slowness in my application. Here is my uh, 10 gig of log file. Please let me know what's happening. Um, the problem is that the main problem is that you have to dig into all these log files to find precisely uh, when it started and when it finishes, on uh, which URL it was happening, on which server it was happening, on which everything. Um, if you don't have HAProxy logs, you will never be aware of what happened. If you have HAProxy log, it will take you some time to find out what happened. And if you have uh, Kibana, obviously you will be able to see it live exactly what happened at what time exactly. So the, I, I think that's um, another layer of uh, monitoring your your apps uh, using HAProxy and, uh, and and Kibana. Um, other er or, other uh, common use case is uh, error types. So the 500, the 400. Uh, you want to be aware when uh, 400s are happening because it means that uh, some uh, application is broken and delivers uh, broken URLs or stuff like this. Uh, you may want to know when you have the 504, 502, uh, or 503, uh, for example, and the 500, which is an application uh, error within your application server. Um, some other use cases we could not highlight uh, it properly that on the client side. So, for example, you know that uh, if you want to host multiple uh, TLS certificates on the same IP, you must ensure that to all your clients are sending the SNI information. As we've seen sooner, HAProxy can log this information, and uh, you could make a dashboard which reports you the user agent which has not uh, sent uh, this request, and also a percentage of the number of requests where you have an SNI or not. And then it will let you know, um, make run some kind of audit on your TLS traffic, and you will be able to know whether it makes sense or not to use one public IP address for multiple uh, TLS certificates. Uh, to save your public IP addresses, uh, which is uh, going to exhaust very soon. So that's the type of, uh, of data that HAProxy can collect for you, uh, can log for you, and then uh, having the proper dashboard within Kibana to analyze everything in a, in a very simple way. Uh, that's, uh, that's some common use cases we have, yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, we do have a few uh, questions. So uh, if you have more questions, you can uh, just type them in the question tab here. But uh, let me start with a few that we have. So uh, kind of like one question for you this year is having is about uh, uh, kind of your enterprise version or uh, what is about HAProxy that you're also doing on top of the open source version. Uh, can you say that again? You are wondering about the the HAProxy, like the enterprise or the premium version of HAProxy. What are the things that you're okay. providing on top of the? Uh, yeah. So, so first thing is that um, we don't do like other uh, open source companies, you know, where they have an open source product to attract people, and then you have a closed source product as soon as you go to production. At HAProxy Technologies, we love open source and we do open source. So basically. Uh, we have only one mainline source code, which is the community version. We developed in the community for the community. And how we do business is that um, we have our enterprise product where we do uh, apply uh, security and uh, bug fix patches uh, in a very uh, frequent and, uh, and a quick way. And we also backport uh, the development feature, so the cutting edge feature that you may want to run in production within our enterprise product. Uh, we can do that in a very reliable way because we know the code uh, very well since uh, we developed it and we maintain it. So that's, that's how we do business. And uh, as I said sooner, on top of this, you can also uh, run some modules uh, with HAProxy Enterprise. 
some modules which help you to run um, HA proxy at scale. So we have some customers with uh, hundreds of HA proxy running, and when you want to update an ACL on hundreds of HA proxy running, it's not the same as uh, running HA proxy on a couple of servers. So you can see the type of, uh, of modules we could have, and we also have some modules to help um, corporate corporation uh, to enforce their web security. So you know. Uh, fighting uh, botnet and stuff like this, we, we we have this type of modules. So that's what we that's what we propose. And once again, our code is open source for our customers. So as soon as you are a customer of us, uh, you can see the code the code source. You can even compile yourself HA Proxy Enterprise from from our source packages if you want. Thank you. Uh, I have another question here uh, for us: Is like, is there a need to change the default log format for HA Proxy? Or does log they support the default log format too? So while uh, LogVayor supports the default log format, we support both TCP and HTTP log format, and you can change it if you want to add fields like we've done here at the webinar, uh, and that's also being supported by LogVayor. So we don't have to change it. Uh, another question is, uh, actually, can I use... We just one, uh, one, one point on this. We, I change it purposely to show that we can improve, um, we can make the HA proxy log more verbose, and uh, we could also uh, take uh, opportunity of this um, more information available within Kibana. We didn't do it yet, but uh, this is a type of information that can be retrieved within Kibana and having more graphs and more everything. So yes, that, the advantage is that HA Proxy is flexible, and Kibana can adapt to the flexibility of HA Proxy. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, my question, can I use multiple logs? Um, so the, the answer is yes. I mean, you can use multiple logs from multiple HA proxy. You can also use and include logs that are not from HA proxy. So you can have a HA proxy, and you can have your uh, PHP server here, and you can have your uh, uh, MySQL or whatever database that you're using in here, and you can have your uh, web server if you're using an, uh, an application server or web server here. <coughs> So all of this can be included in the, in the log for the ELK stack and for log there. And we do support parsing and, uh, and easy configuration for all of the, all of the above. Um, is there a way to trace the requirement or test case uh, incident from application logs? I think this is, uh, this is a question for you, uh, um, Baptiste. Is there a way to trace the requirement or test case? Or incident for well, application. So, so can, you, can you repeat, please? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer this. So, is there a way to trace the requirement or test case or incident from application logs? So, the question is like where, whether I can take the application logs and be able to, to, to trace and figure out what went wrong and what test case was done. So, sometimes it's possible and sometimes it's not, and sometimes you do need uh, the HA proxy logs to figure out what exactly is happening uh, uh, in there. Uh, uh, question, log storage versus cost of direct online uh, with logs I.O. Sometimes we want the log term uh, picture summary of the login information. I don't need all one terabyte of logs, but I do need 1% of the terabyte of logs to see these threads. So the question is like the log volume and the storage. So uh, let me answer this in, in uh, uh, kind of like a talk a little bit about Logs.io and uh, what we provide. So uh, we provide, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, an ELK as a service, and uh, we charge by the volume of data that you ship to Logs.io. Um, you can do, you can use Logstash, and we do it internally as well to say, I only want to get 1% of the logs in because I'm not interested in one terabyte of log. 1% is a good enough sample for me to do it. Uh, we do it as well. It's very easy to configure it in, in Logstash, and we can do it for you on the Logs.io side. So you can say, I'll ship you the data, but you process only 1% or 5%, or whatever is, is, uh, is uh, accessible. We can also do something that's saying, I want to get 100% of the error, so anything which is not uh, response uh, status 200, and I want to get 1% of the 200. So you can run metrics on the 1% and you get the benefit of seeing all the errors which are, uh, should not amount to a lot. So it's very flexible from a cost and the storage uh, uh, perspective. Um, you can also uh, play with the retention in Logs.io and you can decide whether you want it for 14 days and 30 days and, uh, and uh, so forth and uh, all the logs are being archived both on our end and on your end so you can always go back to them and you can create a, ret a very, very high retention on your end uh, and uh, and still not pay uh, 
uh, the amount of money needed to store it in Elasticsearch on our end. Uh, so the, the the question is in the charging of the load volume and the storage volume retention. So the, the for a question about pricing and loads IO, and you can have all of our pricing is available on our website. And uh, we do charge by the log by the daily log volume, and we do charge for the retention. So if you want, uh, it it is we do have an open version which is free up to one gig a day. So if you do have H proxy and you have one gig a day, or you just want to upload a file and see how it looks like, you can easily do it, and it doesn't cost you any money. If you just want it for troubleshoot, if you do want it for ongoing uh, monitoring, then. It starts with $89 uh, a month for one gig a day and, and uh, 14 days retention, uh, which is more than enough for people managing uh, a production environment. And, uh, and obviously, the price per gigabyte per day goes down as, as more volume you buy. We also have enterprise packages that include uh, uh, professional services and, uh, and installation stuff and, and stuff like that. So this is something that, uh, that we do offer. Uh, another question here is like, what other log types are uh, are supported by Logs.io other than HA proxy? So, um, if you do sign in and you do register, obviously it's for free, and you can see if you click on the log shipping tab, then you can see all the different uh, log methods that we support. So, we support stuff like file bits, like uh, log stash, obviously log stash forwarder. Uh, we also support natively all the AWS components. So, uh, if you're using the AWS Load balancer, uh, or you using uh, uh, S3 access logs and uh, and stuff like that, and we also support it. We have uh, uh, a few Docker containers. If you are using Docker, that you can drop in and you can they collect can collect the logs for you. So if you're using our, our system to ship the logs, or you want to monitor MySQL, or you want to monitor Elasticsearch Health, then uh, then uh, we support it as well. And obviously, you can also simply curl a file up and uh, and be able to uh, um, to uh, kind of like see the, the information. Uh, the question is like a file bit, uh, the default or just happened to be at the top? So it just happened to be at the top. Uh, we have quite a lot of people who ship uh, Apache logs, for example, that are using syslogs. Some use file bits, some use syslogs, some use logstash. Um, we have quite a few uh, uh, people that are using Fluentd uh, as a log shipping mechanism, and uh, also shipping directly from uh, their application. So if they're using Node uh, Node.js, then shipping using Winston or uh, the default Node.js. Uh, we do have native support for Heroku. So this is uh, it's kind of like there is Fabit is is uh, is not a default for us. Um, Okay, so uh, this is all the questions. So I, I do hope that you found that uh, webinar uh, informative and interesting. Uh, would be happy. I have one more question. Do you have any NetFlow dashboards? We're looking to log in network, uh, get more to who to peer with. So uh, uh, for NetFlow, for NetFlow dashboard, we do have uh, kind of like VPC NetFlow dashboards. Uh, this is uh, some of the, the thing in the in the uh, ELK apps. Um, I think that I mean we would be happy to kind of like do a webinar. We can have we'd be happy to take it offline and uh, and show it. But we do have uh, AWS VPC and that's all. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we're running our entire infrastructure on AWS, so all of that uh, information is, uh, is is definitely viable, and we use it internally as well. Uh, so uh, okay, if there are no uh, no further questions, I mean we'll hang out on the line here for another uh, two or three minutes. If anyone has another question, we'll be happy to help. And uh, and uh, I want to thank everyone um, that joined this webinar. We're going to send out a recording of it, and uh, I hope you found it informative. And uh, again, you have our contact information, both uh, Baptiste and myself, and we'd be happy to help you with any. Any need that you have, both on HA proxy and the ERK stack and the log analysis in general. So, thank you very much for attending, and we'll keep the line open for another few minutes if someone has another question. Yeah, and don't hesitate to reach out by mail or.
pour avoir respective web. Uh, Ashraf, I think there is a good question. How can we adapt the log format if we use a custom one in HAProxy? So this is a this is a very good question. So uh, we uh, in Logzio we support uh, the different log formats, which are the default, like the TCP and HTTP, and uh, the one we've, that we've added right now for the webinar. <clears throat> if you do have a custom log format, then you can contact us and. Um, uh, you can click on the question mark here at the bottom and uh, create a conversation and uh, saying I'm using HU proxy and I use a custom log format and we'd be happy to help you to parse it. Um, whether you use Logs.io or just a generic ELK stack, then we'll be happy to kind of help you parse it and, uh, and send you over the grog file and uh, how to do it. The key point, anyway, is that Kibana is uh, is able to process any type of log. You just have to delete what information is at what place in your log line, and uh, and is going to be able to process it. So the way to do it, uh, ask uh, Logzio because they are the experts there. But definitely, uh, Kibana can adapt itself uh, to whatever HA proxy can generate as a log line. So. That is true. So there are there are other information that also can be enhanced using Logstash and the EL, and the Elasticsearch. So uh, if you are interested in uh, geographic information, then we can add the geographic uh, GeoIP information based on the IP addresses that are being accessed. Uh, if you are interested in IPv4 uh, filtering, that this is also something that's supported by Kibana, and this is something that uh, that we can add. Uh, if you are sending over a user agent and you want to break it out by the operating system and, uh, uh, and the versions and stuff like that, this is also something which is supported by, uh, uh, by the ELK stack. We just didn't have enough time in this uh, webinar to cover all of this stuff, but a lot of data can be enhanced to be able to, uh, to get more meaningful information using uh, HAProxy logs. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much for attending. I do hope that you uh, that you find it useful and informational, and uh, you have both of our contact information. And we'd be happy if you stay in touch. and uh, And we're here to help if you uh, have any other question or uh, or request. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye bye.